I know for, for sure I flew this plane. You flew uh, the just missing how airline. many times? Yeah, how many times? Approximately three nautical miles out. The missing 777. Captain Nick Kuzlan says he flew the Boeing passenger jet from Malaysia Airlines, where he was both a pilot and executive until he retired two years ago. The missing airliner says Kuzlan was one of the youngest planes in the fleet. And I know that plane is more solid than anything else in the world, you know, and, and for it to just disappear the way it is, lots of questions. Having flown the 777, yeah. Do you rule out catastrophic mechanical failure? If it's catastrophic mecha mechanical failure, it wouldn't be flying silently. It'll just disappear. Instead, it flew for hours, no distress calls. Before our interview, Huslan was in this hall, outside what he called a war room for the military, the airline, and the government. Huslan is not an active participant in the investigation. But he says any 777 pilot knows the wide body jet can be turned. How difficult is it to take a plane, this particular 777, yeah. off course? It is so easy. It is so easy. Any pilot can do this. It's just a keystroke. A stewardess can just turn the keystroke. Does it take a pilot to turn a 777? You just need to know what inputs you need to put into the computers. So is it possible then that it's not just the pilot and oh, pilot? Oh, definitely. It is. It is. It is. It is very, very possible. What Huzlan feels is improbable that the plane's pilot, Captain Zahari Ahmed Shah, was responsible. The two men began their piloting careers together more than 30 years ago. Captain Huzlan says Zahari has been his usual self. No warning signs. No odd behavior. The simplest formula in the whole show is to go straight for the pilot eventually, which is to me a sad thing, being a pilot myself, my own kind. How much has this shaken pilots such as yourself who have flown? No, no, I, I, I'm just shocked. I'm just shocked. Kyung, it's amazing to, to hear him talk there about that plane and, and how easy it was to turn it. There was a point where he was talking to you where he said, look, a stewardess could do this. I know he says that he doesn't think his friend, uh, the captain, was responsible. Does he think it was another crew member or a passenger? Uh, absolutely. He thinks it was someone on the plane, Aaron, and immediately he's turning to someone, perhaps the co-pilot or someone who had easy access to the cockpit because that's the most likely person who he's turning his attention to. Why? Because of cockpit procedures at Malaysia Airlines. It's so difficult to access the cockpit. He says standard operating procedure is the door is very thick as it is in the United States. You need a keypad entry and there's a camera. So he believes that it has has to be someone who had access to the cockpit. It's also possible, he says, that this may be a hijacking, but he says that that's a very small possibility given what he knows about Malaysia Airlines because he believes it would have to take a number of determined people to breach the cockpit and the pilot would still have four to five seconds to send some sort of distress signal.